Good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here. Joe and Lisa coming at you from Ecuador. I um, wanted to talk to you a little bit this morning about our recommendations that we make on our YouTube channel, etc. We want you to know something. You can really help us here. And one of the ways you can help us is, of course, through your wonderful comments. We appreciate those. And uh, we appreciate if you share our videos. That's probably a huge help. And subscribe, yeah. hit the notification bell, all that great stuff. We appreciate all that. Um, many people have reached out to us and asked about, you know, what they can do to help us. By the way, we haven't made a nickel on YouTube yet. Um, no. we, we're still fighting with YouTube, trying to get that worked out. But anyway, um, so that was never really our goal, but it'd be nice to have them pay us. I recoup um, some of the cost. Yeah, sure. Recoup some of our costs. So, uh, yeah, if you want to help us, several people have offered to bring things. Yeah, reach out to us if you're coming. If you want to shove something in your suitcase, you know, we promise not to overburden you with anything. Um, we'll, we'll gladly pay Amazon to have it shipped to your home and, you know, shove it in your suitcase, bring it on down. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, there's not much that we need now. We pretty much, most of the time, we get everything we need right here in Ecuador. A few little mm -hmm. things that we have to get out of the States, but yeah. not very much. We, not much. Our goal all along was to be able to source things from here and not have to ship it across the world, so to speak. Yeah, and in the last six years, lots of things have become available here. They mm -hmm. weren't available when we first got here. True. So, yeah, there's a lot of things available here now that pretty pretty surprising. I think once you're on the ground, it takes a little while to figure out how to get things here or if they're here, where to find them. That's been the biggest challenge. Absolutely. So um, I, I, I hate to really even talk about this, but I have to. Um, so again, we appreciate those wonderful comments, et cetera. We, if you have something really negative to say, maybe don't, um, maybe uh, keep that to yourself. Uh, let me just say that. Yeah. Um, if someone gets too negative, too violent, I, I, I will get rid of it in a heartbeat. Um, I'm not, that's not what we're about. That's not what we're here for. We're here to try to help people. And um, the recommendations that we make, not, not all of them um, are uh, friends, but some are. Um, and these are people whom we absolutely trust and who've proven themselves, not just to us, but to other people that they're worthy of that trust. Yeah, and you know, the world is crazy enough and we really try to keep the negativity off of the channel. Um, we try not to be um, overly negative in any respect, um, just because it's, it doesn't help the world. Well, I've got some questions here we're gonna to try to answer. Mm -hmm. So, um, are all of our videos recommending the persons being interviewed? Are we recommending that person that we're interviewing? Not necessarily. Um, sometimes we interview people, and I give you an example. There's three or four veterinarians here in town. Um, I try not to interview every single restaurant in town. There's over 70. Let's see, we got an alien behind yes, us again. We do. <laughs> <laughs> but there's over 70 restaurants in town. I can't possibly interview them all, and I can't, um, um, you know, recommend every single restaurant. Uh, it's just not possible. So just because I interview someone does not mean that, that we are recommending them. If you hear me say in the video, we highly recommend these people. Then that's a little bit different. And like you said, I mean, if all we did was interview the 60, 70, 80 restaurants that pop up in town, everybody get a little bit bored with that because there's a lot of redundancies in the types of food. Absolutely. There's, and there's all types of food. I, there are certain foods I just don't eat. I don't, I, my stomach won't tolerate, so, you know, I just can't eat there. But, no, so we don't recommend everybody that we interview necessarily. And it's not that we don't like them or, you know. No, it's not a like or dislike thing. It's more of will people find something interesting or this person may provide something that's a little different than, um, than what you might normally think of or see. Sure. And, you know, a perfect example, Indian food. Not wild about it. Um, just never have been. And new Indian food restaurant came to town. We tried it. Still weren't wild about it. Um, <laughs> however, 
other people who are wild about Indian food would find that very interesting. So, yeah. you know, while I can't personally recommend it because it's not my my favorite, it might really tweak your interest. So that's yeah. that's why we do it. So um, do we recommend anyone specifically for anything? Yes. Yeah, several people. Um, uh, we've recommended Aravia for rentals. Um, that family is as honest as they come. We love that family. Uh, they've been very, very good to us. We've had great experiences with them. Um, you know, other people have had such great experiences with them. Uh, as you'll see on our videos, they all the time rave about them. So both Aura, her, her brother, her father, all of them are wonderful people. Yeah, and I will say, I think I've heard on some videos that, well, if there's a recommendation, then that's just one person's view. And I'll say, though it starts out with our view, we get a lot of feedback because um, we meet a lot of different people that come to Vilcabamba for different reasons. And we, when we constantly get good feedback about someone that we recommended, it adds to um, the validity that they're good people. Um, on the same note, if we constantly get the same bad feedback about some people, then we tend to scoot away from them a little bit. Absolutely, and, and you know, the next question is, do we warn against using certain people? Um, you have to be very, very careful with that here in Ecuador. Um, there are laws here that that affect how um, defamation laws, let me say, will affect how we're able to do such things. And so um, we probably won't ever make those statements on video. Uh, but if you're here and you're thinking about using somebody and you come up to me in person and ask, I'm going to give you either an I don't know, I've never used them, or, um, you know, I've heard some good things and I've heard some bad things. Now, I got to tell you, just about anybody in town, you're probably going to get a 50-50 rating. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that's a global thing, too, is like either either you had one good thing happen or one bad thing happen. But again, our goal is not to um, shy people away from people necessarily or tell you how bad everybody is that maybe we don't care for. But it, you have to make your own judgments what you're on the ground. And um, we we heard a lot of a lot of really negative things about a lot of people for weird reasons, and so we try not to mix that up into the videos. I mean, everybody's different. Everybody deserves a chance, and either they're going to do good for you or they're not. Yes, and you know, for example, Isabel Mascara, our visa facilitator, she um, did a marvelous job. For us, we knew her a year before we hired her, mm -hmm. um, and she was a recommendation by a friend who uh, had gotten to know her, and just my watching her interact with this friend and how she helped him in his life told me everything I needed to know about Isabel. Mm -hmm. So um, out of all the people we've recommended to her, um, everybody has come back extremely happy. I found one person who was not somebody we recommended, but one person told me they had a negative experience uh, here's something I got to tell you about that is that if you don't tell Isabel everything she needs to know about your criminal background, et cetera, you're probably going to have a negative experience. Yeah. Um, you know, because if, you, if you're honest with her and you give her everything, she's either going to tell you, I can't help you, or yeah, I think I can get your visa. So the laws are the laws. She can't change that. Now, do laws change? Yes. Oh, and she has been wonderful when laws change. She kind of, if you're in the process, she gives you a heads up. She lets you know what's going on, what you need to be careful for. But that's just it. Is, um, like you said, we get to know people, not just for what they can do for us or for what they can do for somebody else, but get to know them personally. And um, when their character is good, their character is good, and they're going to do everything they can to help you. That's right. It doesn't mean that somebody's not going to be dissatisfied with a service at some point. That's going to happen. You're never going to have a 100% satisfaction rate, I don't believe. I think a really good example is rentals. There aren't a lot right now available. Yeah. Can somebody find you a rental that you're willing to um, live in and, and it be a good fit for you? 
that has nothing to do with the person providing it. It has everything to do with what's available and what you're um, willing to accept. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that um, when it comes to a lot of these recommendations, um, you need to understand we're, we're relating our experience, we're relating what other people have told us. It doesn't mean that you're not ever going to have a bad experience with someone we've recommended. It can happen. Sure. Things happen in this world. People have bad days. You know, someone uh, had the question about, um, actually it's come up three or four times, the question about living in Ecuador for six months at a time and then living somewhere else for six months. Yes, that's possible. So I had mentioned that in a video and somebody uh, stopped me at the market uh, just about a week ago and said, hey, they changed the law on the visa tourist extension visa. So the way it works is you're here 90 days automatically on a tourist visa on your passport. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they've changed the law here. It used to be you had to go on the 90th day to apply for the extension. That's nerve wracking. Yeah. So now that's changed. The change in the last three weeks that you need to go between the 80th and the 90th day to go get your visa extension. And it's, I don't know, it's over 125 bucks. I don't know the exact fee, so don't quote me on it. But you go in there, you have to go to pay your money at the bank, and then you have to go back to the visa office and uh, get your tourist extension so you can stay another 90 days. On the extension, don't stay 91 days or 92 days. No. You're going to pay a penalty exiting the country. You need to be out of here on the 90th day. Um, and that's per year. Yeah. So it's only 90 days per year that you're granted access into a country. And that's not just Ecuador. That's kind of global. Now, you might get away with it. It's happened. Sometimes somebody's not paying attention at the airport. You slip right through. No big deal. Mm, I um, wouldn't count on that, though. I sure wouldn't count on that. So I, we're just telling you what the law is. What you get away with is something else. I'm not going to suggest you try to circumvent the laws of Ecuador in any way. No, no, not unless you just really like to give them money. Yeah, because they will fine you for that. Um, and we've seen people being fined for it while yeah. we were in uh, one of the... Uh, while we were in Machala, we went to uh, get my migratory movement document. And there was someone that had overstayed their visa and was here illegally. What do they call it? Irregular. Irregular for um, quite some time, and her fine was quite hefty. Yeah. So we try to give you the best up-to-date up information. So when I heard that piece of information about them changing the law from between the 80th and 90th days, I went to Isabel. Isabel, can you check on this for me? And she shot back an email saying, yep, that's the new change. That's correct. So, you know, we try to relate that to you. On all of our recommendations... Um, when we do a video, coming back and asking us 100 questions about Visa <laughs> is not going to help you. We, we are not in the know. We, we are we, not the Visa experts. And we're not, we, we did ours a couple of years ago, so everything has changed. So in the video we did with Isabel, it's called the e Ecuador Easy Visa Process. So you can go to that video um, on our channel, and her contact information is mm -hmm. in the description box of that mm -hmm. video. It's why we list everyone's contact. Ours information is in the contact uh, description box. So mm -hmm. please reach out to them. Um, we don't mind answering a few questions, but overall, I can't tell you what the price of rentals are. I don't rent. No. Um, I or can... if they're going up, going down, good in the area, not good in the area. We just yeah. don't know. I can tell you what I think, but it's, you know, maybe accurate, maybe not. I can tell you what. My friends I know are renting for. As a matter of fact, we have one friend now that's got an apartment in town that's for rent. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in a ground floor apartment. There you go. So, um, yeah. And so um, we, we just, we can't be the source of information for everything. Um, we just kind of want to give you a general overview and the people to talk to. Um, if you go on to Vilcabamba Community or Vilca People, those Facebook pages... Um, you will see people advertising rentals. Mm -hmm. I would suggest if you don't know these renters, you don't know who these landlords are, you've never dealt with them, you need somebody in there advocating for you um, to make sure 
that this is a good person to rent from. There are people here who are unscrupulous, just like anywhere else in the world. Sure. Um, and and you do need somebody, especially when you come to a foreign country and you're looking at staying, you do need to find somebody that can stand in your corner with you. And um, if you find something that maybe they don't have, ask them about it. Ask everyone. I mean, we rent out our uh, little casitas. And before we rent, we ask everyone about the people that are asking to rent. One time we did not mm -hmm. ask around, did not do our due diligence, and we got a bad renter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's all I'll say about that. Um, the next question was, should we be more careful because of the cultural language slash language bar bar barriers? Mm -hmm. The cultural slash language barriers. Yes. Um, uh, you should, because if you don't know Spanish real well, there's certain words in there that you don't hear that are going to be very important. So you need somebody who's fluent um, that will advocate on your behalf. Um, there are cultural things here. Um, the Ecuadorian people are lovely, and they want to please people, and they're going to do a lot of this right here when, yeah, you know, that may not necessarily come into being. They really want to tell you what you want to hear. They really want to please you. Yeah. And and so you have to be aware of what we call the Ecuadorian no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't like to tell you no. And so if they're not really over exuberant about something, that's a that's a maybe. It's well, not and I will yes. say from a cultural standpoint, you know, we don't like to say a lot of negative things about people, places, what have you. Um, we may do some likes and dislikes really lightly but part of that is because the culture here doesn't like um, always bashing people and the negative aspects in life um, they keep their head down and they keep moving forward they may or may not tolerate something but it doesn't mean they're going to talk bad about things and I think worldwide that's probably a pretty good um, a pretty good characteristic to for more people to have. Yeah, they don't readily accept gossip in this community. They don't no. like it. No. Um, they don't like defamation, obviously. Um, so I think that, you know, it's probably a pretty good plan to um, stay away from that kind of behavior. And, uh, and, you know, if you're a person that expects everything immediately done your way all the time, it's probably not going to work out for you here. <laughs> I'll That's just true. say it. That's true. And I will say, Vilcabamba is a small town. Everybody knows pretty much everything. But it doesn't mean they're going to talk about it. Yeah, do your homework. If you're going to come here and be what we call a cranky gringo, um, yeah, we prefer you not come. <laughs> you know, that's our personal preference. Well, you're we, just not going to do well. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't help anybody. Mm -mm. We don't want you to go home mad. No, your experience needs to be positive. So the last question, do our recommendations ever change? Yeah, I'm sure. going to give you a perfect example. There's a, a um, we've stayed in Cuenca at probably about four or five different hotels, hosteria mm -hmm. kind of things. And so um, originally we were staying at one in Cuenca that we really liked and we were recommending and that changed. Um, the couple that owned it divorced. Um, management change. Management change. And we went, yeah, no. Um, we're not staying there anymore. So we don't recommend that place anymore. Um, we're not going to tell you who it is. Again, defamation laws. So. Um, we've stayed at the Victoria Hotel. Really like it. It's, you know, for what we like to do there, it's 100 bucks a night. So a lot of people don't want to spend that kind of money. Uh, we liked it. It was great. It's great for a special occasion for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, we stayed at a couple that were just horrible. And I'll tell you, don't let anybody put you on the street side in any hotel. No. You want to be on the non-street side rooms. Um, it's going to be noisy. Ecuador is a noisy place. Trust us on that. Um, well, cities. It's city life. Yeah. And the city life has noise. Most of the night. <laughs> well, we get noise up here, too, where we yeah. are. Quite frankly, there's a celebration going on in town right now. One of the churches that's uh, at Ishkaluma. And, yeah, the thump, thump, thump of the music 
till three in the morning. That does happen. And the problem is, I think I'm the only one that can hear it. <laughs> so true. I do hear the fireworks sometimes, a pop, boom. The fireworks have been every night. Yeah, that does happen. So yeah, our recommendations do change. And one of the hotels we're recommending right now in Cuenca is the Pegasus Hotel. Um, I actually filmed this, the segment with Isabel at the Pegasus Hotel and uh, had a huge rain shower right in the middle of it, which kind of affected the sound a little bit. Uh, couldn't help it. But yeah, great hotel, you know, for a single, it's like um, 20, 20 bucks. bucks a night yeah. for a single and nice rooms. Again, not on the street side, in the back. Um, it includes breakfast in that price, but we usually eat across the street. So if um, a couple, and I think she told me in the matrimonial suite, which is a little bit bigger room, just a tiny bit bigger room, uh, queen size beds, don't expect a king. Um, I think she told me those run $30 a night. Don't hold me to that. Clean, nice clean rooms, everything's good. You know, the bathrooms are pretty typical Ecuadorian. They can be very small. Um, but yeah, a good place to hang your clothes, TVs. Um, you know, if you want a little heater in the room, I think you can mm -hmm. get that. They'll get one for you. Most of them will give you one. Yeah. Now, we used to recommend another hotel in that same area. We don't recommend anymore. Again, change of management and ownership. Yeah. And it's for us, when we go, we don't we don't hang out in the hotel room all day long. We use that to rest or to sleep, but then the rest of the time, because it's vacation for us, we want to go out and, you know, walk around town because in Cuenca, you pretty much walk and see and do and just have fun. Um, and so we don't spend that much time in the hotel room. If you are looking for that really fancy, nice hotel room, Victoria is probably the better place to yeah, go. Yeah, Victoria, you can get the matrimonial suite there. It's got a separate um, living room, basically, you know. Balcony. Balcony outside. Along the river. Yeah. yeah, so that's, you know, that's what 100 bucks would get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But $100 versus 20 to $30, you can do a whole lot in Cuenca with that extra money. Yeah, you sure can. And so that's just personal preference. But, yeah, we really do recommend the Pegasus. It's been good sure. for us. That could change, but... You know, we like the Pegasus done yeah. well. And, uh, of course, you know, Oravia, the happy office, definitely a great place. And, um, you know, uh, we will continue to recommend things. And But, again, things can change. And if you have yeah. a bad experience, we hope not. But it could happen. Don't be angry with us. We're just trying to give you the best information that we have. And uh, hopefully that will work. So that's our spiel on recommendations, yeah. <laughs> um, so there are some things that we do recommend. By the way, when you come into Ecuador, we don't recommend going to Guayaquil Airport unless you have to. It is so dangerous traveling from, traveling from Guayaquil Airport right now to uh, either Cuenca or on to Vilcabamba. Um, that's a, one, it's a very long, long trip to the Cajas National Park. Roads can get washed out. But they are targeting people at the airport and they're robbing taxis with tourists in them. Their shuttle vans are robbing buses. So it's happened. Um, hasn't happened to anyone that we know, but we see it in the news a lot. So Guayaquil, you know, if you have to fly into Guayaquil, it might be worth the money to then fly on to Quito and from Quito down to Loja. Um, plan to spend a day in Quito flying around and, you know, fly to Quito and a day looking around Quito and, and get really good recommendations for taxi drivers. Don't yeah. just pick any old taxi. I think somebody just came in um, about a week ago or so that we met and he had gone into Guayaquil and he stayed in Guayaquil, I think overnight, which was probably smarter. So they're not just picking you out of the airport to, uh, you know, attack your ride. Um, and he did okay. So... Yeah, stay at the airport if you got to go into Wackley. And quite frankly, in Quito, the, the airport uh, hotel right there, the hotel that's there, what is that, a Sheraton? or I don't know, remember where it is. But anyway, something like that. nice hotel there, 70, 80 bucks a night or something. Stay right there, and that way you don't have to worry about taxis all over the place. The airport mm -hmm. shuttle will pick you up and take you the quarter of a mile to the airport hotel. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and right within the, the airport, 
is the keto overstay. Um, mm -hmm. You can stay right there at the airport in a nice recliner to rest in. It is. I'm not going to say you're going to sleep, but you might be able to rest. <laughs> now, the airport hotel there is really nice. That's, that's yeah, nice king-size beds. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. Yeah. The meals are kind of expensive there. And um, you pay for everything individually. I mean, yeah. the room fee is separate from pretty much everything else that you're going to pay for. Yeah. But um, we do recommend flying into Quito. And then, you know, the next morning, taking the flight down or the next afternoon. Yeah. Um, you do have to be a little bit careful certain times of the year. The afternoon flights can get canceled because of high winds. Mm -hmm. So be careful with that. Um, sometimes they'll turn around and go back to Quito. Um, and they won't take you, you know, till the next morning. Mm -hmm. So um, you're going to be tired from wherever you're coming from. Yeah. It's worth consideration of staying overnight, seeing a little bit of Quito. And uh, make sure you get a good recommendation on taxis to take you around. There are some hotels nearby that are outside of the airport, and they do have shuttles. And there's some that I think um, have a shuttle and have uh, good access to walking in Quito to different shops and stuff. We haven't found that yet, but we need to. Yeah. Um, just so, because when we go to Quito, really we can't sleep so the altitude just changes everything and we can't sleep no matter how tired we are so being able to maybe walk around cautiously and and shopping a little bit while you're there might might be a good thing yeah we're not we're not all that familiar with keto i mean we've been into keto but um yeah so just be careful in those large large cities um Guayaquil currently doesn't have a flight here to Loja. Mm -mm. Maybe someday that'll happen. Um, you know, dogs are choosing this time to play. They're putting their two cents Boy, working. Well, they are, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all we've got to say on the subject. Hope you're going to have a great day. Ciao for now. <laughs>